We need to travel back in time a little bit since things are heating up and becoming more fascinating as of right now. Therefore, let's begin by talking about June 19th. As a result, J.P. Morgan reported him, and SEC records in the Ripple case strengthened Ether. What an outrageous claim, huh? This is a really absurd claim. The speech concedes that there is another type according to the verbatim quote. It is not a security because, at least according to our tests, there is no controlling party, but there might be a need for regulation to safeguard buyers. Interesting. The banks down here said that Ether and other cryptocurrencies that are sufficiently decentralized to avoid being labeled as securities may be placed in a new category. Is it possible for Ethereum to be genuinely decentralized? Even a stake moves proof that it is not decentralized is known to us. We are aware that XRP is one of the industry's most decentralized tokens. Escrow is a topic that is frequently brought up, but the people who do so frequently don't even comprehend how it works. However, a lot of people were wondering what would happen to the Hyman records and what their current situation was. They emerged, yes. We received confirmation of the information we required. Really, there wasn't much more than that. However, J.P. Morgan's claim that these records genuinely support a theory is rather outlandish. As we move forward in time, we are aware that J.P. Morgan recently stated that Ethereum has disappointed since its Shanghai upgrade. Now, several individuals took to Twitter to essentially ask, are they going to switch to XRP now? It was widely believed that BlackRock was now purchasing XRP. They've given up on Bitcoin, as you may know. And right now, J.P. Morgan will use XRP, as you may know. Simply put, I don't believe that is always the case. Outside of this, however, this may be pause, and a few of the residents of the neighborhood really got me thinking. Actually, that's it. It was posted by Mr. Huber. We could be certain that J.P. Morgan participated in the Ethereum ICO through Joseph Lubin. As early as 2015, J.P. Morgan was developing on Ethereum. Between 2018 and 2020, J.P. Morgan and the SEC had hundreds of emails back and forth regarding Ripple. By the way, J.P. Morgan recently lost millions and millions of emails and was fined. It was probably $4 million or less in my opinion. There wasn't much to be excited about. But we are aware of J.P. Morgan has a corrupt record. Documents have been kept secret. They have kept a lot of information secret. One of the largest banks in the U.S. and in theory, the entire plan is this one. However, J.P. Morgan doesn't really provide any information at all. Much of it is concealed. Many people are paid off. A lot of corruption exists. However, the email service provider for J.P. Morgan unintentionally destroyed many million emails from the years 2018 through 2020. The majority of investors in consensus are J.P. Morgan. Joseph Lubin is referred to by Vitalik Peterin's father as J.P. Morgan. The main rival of Ripple is J.P. Morgan. This is where things really start to get interesting as many have long said that J.P. Morgan is afraid of Ripple. The fear of J.P. Morgan is XRP. And once more, we bring up the fact that for a while, XRP was the second most valuable asset right behind Ethereum and XRP. The legal action then takes place all of a sudden. The flip is Ethereum. One of the most powerful movers in the market is Ethereum. I believe we already discussed that. Now outside of this, we can also see Ethereum founders in the A16Z headquarters from the digital asset by timeline 2023. A 16-year-old visits a Bitcoin conference in 2014, Ethereum founder announces an ICO, and whales are covered up in 2018. You can't make this stuff up for the longest time. Clinton meets with a 16-year-old VCWG, sets 2018 in action for him, delivers an E3 pass speech in 2021 for him, and joins his 16s. Between JP Morgan and some of the biggest incumbents around, corruption has been simmering in the background. You know, it actually kind of shows you why Ethereum gets the free pass in the conventional financial world. Why was the following RP target apart from this? We also know why the people connected to the theorem received a free pass as well as what they did with it once it had been granted. Put out again, a 16-year-old is a major player, right? We are aware of this, but pay attention to this video. I remember Vitalik from back when. Most people aren't aware of this. You and another group that became Colored Coins, as well as Blockstream, all joined his 16Z in 2013, when Dixon and I were general partners there, am I right? And I do recall asking, who is the founder? Do you remember? And simultaneously, everyone raised their hands. And I thought, okay, that will be. There will be some fission events here. The splitting and rejoining that occurs across a combination will take place. The number of co-founders had now decreased to around seven or something like when we all had the talk outside at the Bitcoin conference in, I believe, 2014. In other words, it's like a lower number, but it's still there. I'll now briefly discuss the funding model. So starting on February 1st, we will hold a two-month fundraising event. You can access it at funds.ethereum.org. 
In order to offset the higher risk is planned, the portion of the initial issue will be 1,000 ETH for every Bitcoin or up to 2,000 ETH for every Bitcoin if you buy early. We purchase from a variety of different brands. The size of the unit or the scope of the transaction may be restricted. Joseph Lubin also mentions here that people can purchase Ether under different identities, allowing the same person to retain higher quantities of Ether under other identities. That has no impact on anything. It remains the concept of guess what? You have these people having significantly more Ether than was reported, so what does that mean? It is now centralized rather than dispersed. The next day, he went to see Andreessen after speaking with Grunfest during a fireside speech on the Stanford campus, and this is the portion that few people are aware of. And he asked Chris Dixon to gather the key figures in the sector. Andreessen, since the beginning, I have been Andreessen's representative in all of their cryptocurrency ventures. I therefore had the opportunity to write all that material. Yes, and it was here that the $2.2 billion largest cryptocurrency fund ever was introduced. I think Ethereum was their largest holding at the moment. I'm rather certain. Bill Hinman was once more mentioned as one of the most important counselors. This information is untrue. And for the same reason, Stephen Nirioff is going off on Twitter, literally citing the video you just watched, saying things like, listen, this is all out there now in the open on how Ethereum essentially turned a blind eye to it, and you could see why. By the way, we recently saw that Dogecoin, XRP, and a few other currencies had been taken from New York's green list, when Citi and JP Morgan each revealed their own deposit tokens. This can't possibly be related in any way, right? Most individuals are going to answer that. But in the end, contrary to what the majority of people would have claimed, Ripple is being targeted because it was trading XRP openly. They were targeted for this reason. It's not because, you know, JP Morgan has been working with Ethereum for quite some time. If you will, Ethereum might be said to be JP Morgan's preferred candidate. This is the preferred bank, the incumbent bank. Every single significant organization is developing a private technology based on Ethereum. For a very long time, Ethereum has been the preferred option. I am aware that we frequently mention how elite groups selected Ripple and XRP, among other things. And believe me when I say that Ripple has a ton of institutional clients on board, but that's not how JP Morgan is utilizing Ethereum, is it? For a very long time, the XRP ledger didn't really see a lot of institutional widespread acceptance outside of what Ripple was doing. Right, Excel hasn't. Only Ripple has, and Ripple is entirely distinct as a business, as an XRP, and as a token. Outside of this, though, we are already aware of all the key relationships. Because of people like Utility Theory, XX1133, and 122,111, we are aware of this. There are numerous players present. You can see that they are all marked here but we are aware of all of these links. This is a live mind map, by the way. You guys can check out this information. These are the relationships between many world events that require research. We're referring to FTX, the SEC administration, XRP, Walsuhim, and Clayton collectively. Even all the links that lead back to Ethereum. Guess what though? This mind map shows how they're organized. This cannot be a lie. The Ethereum Enterprise Alliance, every relationship further down the line, and even Charles Hoskinson himself are all present here. And at the end of the day, isn't it true that it never ends? First and foremost, we need to shine a light on the people who are conducting all the research on this, but we also need to highlight the data and look into these people. The issue is that many of the people connected to this are further up the food chain. We're discussing regulators. We're referring to public servants. The individuals involved in this have illustrious names after all. And guess what normally happens when you have that? That's where the issues arise, and since they must keep them safe, we probably won't see an investigation. You folks do notice that, as does even a 16's the. Notice how it's orange there? That's quite obviously linked to all the people involved in the regulatory, you know, targeted attacks on the area. It is now again concentrated on Gary Gensler and even FTX Bill Himmon. Your choice. You just can't make this stuff up, I mean. And aside from this, this is another reason why many SEC officials, like Gary Gensler, have net worths of at least $100 million and upwards of $50 million. Where do you suppose all that money comes from, after all? Additionally, a lot of individuals believe that JP Morgan is connected to Mt. Gox. On Twitter, Nerd Nation Unbox shared this. We do find that JP Morgan Dole, the Bitcoin trading app in 2014, was hacked in 2013, and Charles was aware that JP Morgan was already a player in the cryptocurrency market at the time. Why did he know that? And now, here it is. Have any of you watched this video? I had no idea Juke Morgan had its own Bitcoin trading app. They have been playing since 2013. They outperformed everyone else in cryptocurrency. 
Also take note of Charles' advice to find a suitable entry point and investigate this at the beginning of the interview when someone inquired if Jamie Dimon stated what he said. Get a smaller entry point rather than a large one. There are guys already. I am positive that his London traders are aware of the fact that he declared in his statement that he would sack anyone seen trading Bitcoin on his desk. I'm sure some of these engineers and coders over here would understand this better, but I do know for a fact that someone created an app specifically for JP Morgan traders back in 2013 to trade Bitcoin. I believe they made it in XLS or something similar because their actual browser was being watched by their bosses. They were attempting to trade Bitcoin with Max Kaiser receiving a special exception because their algorithm was trading off of mentions of Bitcoin on Twitter. At the time in 2013, there was little media coverage of Bitcoin, so whenever Max mentioned it, the price would soar. As a result, they had to leave their trading desk at JP Morgan and go over to the developed app and shut it down. I am aware that they created a complex program that was unable to handle Max Kaiser. Yep. You now have some of the insights, so there. We are aware of what she said in relation to Jamie Dimon, who said that JP Morgan will sack any employee found to be in possession of Bitcoin. We are aware that JP Morgan was tricked into buying more Bitcoin by using that statement as a means of market manipulation. We are aware that they have been buying cheap Bitcoin and manipulating the market for a very long time. We remark, hey, they're shaking you out so they can buy your coins at much lower prices for this reason. We are aware that this is true. We also know that JP Morgan banked Mickey Gox over here from Digital Asset Buy. Who deposited FTX in the bank, anyone? Once more, this is something that we have been paying attention to. Many people in this field have been connecting FTX to well-known figures. Although we don't know who exactly bankrolled FTX, it wouldn't surprise me if it was an established banker. But Mount is right here. Gox, make your life easier by making cash deposits. This capture dates back to November 26, 2011, and it is current. This occurred on October 22, 2011, if I had to guess. What can you make out among the 1,500 branches? The best partner for me, Gox, in the USA is Chase. Once more, we are aware that JP Morgan was present at the time. Since they are the ones responsible for many of the collapses, it would not surprise me if these incumbents were shaking people out. It is totally up their alley. We can also see from Mirrored Nation on Box, which was created to cut out the middleman banks. Shout out to Nerd Nation on Box, Digital Asset Investor, Utility Theory, and many more people in this video, as well as Layer Z, ODZ, Blockchain, and Crypto. As a result, Morgan established a stake in Ethereum and bought a large fake whale to attempt and dominate the market. They then attacked the competition, ETHGATE, through manipulation and by exploiting their connections. The fact that Jake Morgan controls crucial Ethereum infrastructure has been made public. We are aware that JP Morgan was largely responsible for all of this. Therefore, it really kind of makes you wonder about their stance and where they're coming from when you look at what Ripple is trying to do, when you look at XRP, and when you look at all these folks from the space attacking it. At the end of the day, listen, if you are in cryptocurrency and have been following cryptocurrency for a very, very long time, then you are aware of how sleazy these incumbent bankers are in their suits and the extent they would go to prevent anyone from undercutting them and stealing their company. These are incredibly greedy people who come from incredibly greedy banking institutions, at the end of the day, they managed to secure a portion of the market. By the way, Juke Morgan is working closely with authorities both inside and outside the industry because, guess what? Over 10% of the U.S. deposits were taken by them. They were acquiring banks that failed this year, which is never acceptable. Another important factor for why we should pay close attention to corruption and manipulation is the fact that they are operating a monopoly system around the banking sector. Again, when we consider Juke Morgan, many people assume that they won't ever be singled out for scrutiny or subjected to an investigation. We already know that they destroyed a significant quantity of evidence and got away with it, so I am afraid that may very well be the case. They recently satisfied the regulators. Once more, this bank has virtually limitless capacity in terms of what it can pay. In light of that, please share your thoughts in the section below. Please share your opinions with me. Please leave a like, subscribe, and share notice if you like the video.